Welcome to the final build part of the radio control boat. So today we're going to be focusing on the nozzle assemblies. So if you've seen the other parts of my videos, then you would know that I have a dual jet radio controlled boat. For this boat, I'm planning on making pitchable nozzles that feature full reverse buckets and independent steering. So my first step was to print out a prototype nozzle. So this one nozzle was going to act as sort of the development platform for uh, the improvements that I could make to it. So of course it took me a few tries of holes being too big, pieces snapping off, and just general bad design before I finally was able to get a working prototype. I ended up settling on a design like this. I think it's pretty functional, uh, fairly easy to print, and will hold up pretty good. Uh, the tolerances are also pretty tight in the mechanism. So once I was done that, it was time to take apart and waterproof a bunch of these little servos. They're pretty cheap, but uh, the second that they get into some water, they'd fill up and probably fry. So the way that I ended up doing this was taking them apart and actually filling the servo's body with Vaseline. And then I, after that, I went out and sprayed them down with a uh, basically flex seal equivalent sort of sealer on the outside, just a polyurethane spray. So as you can probably imagine, this was a pretty messy process. And the problem when you work with Vaseline is that it's actually not soluble in water. So typically, you know, after you would mess with something nasty like this, you'd go and wash your hands in the sink. But if you do that with Vaseline, you're still gonna have Vaseline on your hands. So um, you end up having to use some kind of solvent that it is soluble in. So I just typically would hose my hands down quickly with acetone and that ended up working, but Man, I do not like working with Vaseline. If you ever have to do anything with it, I would recommend wearing gloves uh, because you're gonna be kind of having slimy hands for a few days afterwards. All the mess was worth it though because once I was done, I had three servos that were filled to the gills with Vaseline. Um, so once I put the polyurethane coating over top of them, they have been perfectly waterproof ever since. So. Yay. That was one problem that actually was bothering me for a few days. I was wondering, like, ah, can I buy waterproof servos? You can't really. Um, and I just thought, ah, eh, just do what I think will work. And it ended up working. So that's always nice when that happens. So then I moved on to the small little shafts that are responsible for supporting and turning the rudders. So I took more of the brass stock that I was using for the impeller shafts and cut off two small sections after filing it down nice and flat. Then finally, it was on to assembling the rest of the prototype. So I got all new fresh parts off the printer uh, and put them all together, including the waterproof servos that I'd done earlier. And after it was assembled, it honestly was a pretty rigid mechanism. Uh, both the rudder and the reverse bucket felt pretty good, and so did the pitching motion. There isn't too much play in any of the mechanisms, and everything feels pretty tip-top. Okay, we we're just going to do a little test of this assembly here uh, with some low throttle. So we're back in the bathtub, but it won't be too loud this time. Did the cat. But uh, we're going to test out all the linkages, make sure everything works, and the waterproofing on the servos. So first thing I wanted to test was the waterproofing on the servos, and that seems to all still be good. So, and then the second thing is we'll test the pitching. So, I'll start it off the jet. So I'll be honest, I don't really know what I wanted to test here. I think I was uh, just excited to put it in the water and see see what the pitch pitching nozzles would do. 
Um, I'd never actually seen this on a radio control boat before, so I was kind of excited about the novelty of it all. Uh, and it ended up working pretty good, as you can see here. When I pitched it up, the water jet went up uh, exactly as planned. I also wanted to test my reverse bucket design. That was actually kind of a hard thing for me to do in SolidWorks. Um, but as you can see here, a bunch of water is actually shooting over the top. That's because I had it, the servo hooked directly up to the receiver, and that only had two pre-programmed points. The one that was when the bu bucket was flipped down was actually too low, which caused water to shoot over the top. Once I hooked it up to an Arduino, I was able to control that a bit more precisely, and it works pretty decent now. At least I get some reverse thrust, so that's what I want. So once everything was tested to be pretty good, I refined the design a bit more and included the other servo onto the nozzle. That just simplifies it. I only have one part then instead of three parts to print. And of course, it ended up getting stuck to the print bed. It's still on there, though. So I also had to waterproof the servos for the left side. So. I went through that whole process of filling them with Vaseline and spraying them down again, this time hanging them by the cords because I learned last time that if they're on a flat surface, they stick. Anyways, after that, it was time to work on the acrylic cover. So I ended up going out and buying a drill because <clears throat> it's one of the tools that I didn't own yet. Um, it's actually proved to be really valuable since. Oh yes, and then my cat got spayed. So that took up a bunch of my time too. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, a boat. <laughs> so I lined up the acrylic panel on the top, marked everything in terms of the size, and started to gouge it. So I, I did this the same way I've cut acrylic in the past, where you use a knife and you score down a line continuously, and then you actually break it off on the side. So um, in retrospect, maybe I should have just invested in a jigsaw, because as you'll see, it didn't really work out exactly perfectly, but, uh, Oh well, nothing's perfect, right? Oh yeah, and I ended up printing out all of the rest of the parts for the nozzles. So I ended up getting both sides done. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know, you guys be the judge. I picked gray, that could change, um, but I think it looks pretty cool. And they're independently pitchable, so yay. So in case you're wondering, yeah, surprisingly that actually hurts. Um, even with the oven mitt on, my hand kind of hurt after, uh, but anyways. So that left two big jaggies. I think that was more down to the fact that I didn't score it very well. Uh, I could have taken a lot more time, but I was really impatient. And I'd messed up already quite a, bit, a few times, so I decided to just kind of ask her it, go for it. Uh, maybe not the best strat. But once I started doing the other side, I switched my tactic a little bit, grabbed another pair of oven oven gloves and use my thumbs to sort of break it off this way it kind of resulted in the same thing i was hoping that it would be a cleaner cut but still had a bunch of jaggies on it in order to fix those jagged sides i ended up printing out two big strips to cover it so nobody in the future who just sees the next video <laughs> will comment on how horrific it looks. I know it's bad, okay. I did the best with what I had. <laughs> Once I drilled the holes for and glued in the magnets, uh, I ended up having a pretty awesome thing. I mean, I've always had to use screw attachments for covers like that, and having the magnets is just so convenient. Really big recommend. So then this was the final sort of part addition that I had to do was the two cooling fans for the motors. I've actually had motors burn out in my boats before, so this time I decided to add two fans that were sort of ducted directly on there to give them some fresh air. They'll still probably end up burning out. I'm not saying for sure right now, but uh, I'm going to push it pretty hard, of course. Uh, we'll see how it works, and if they do, maybe I'll put some brushless motors in the future because I know that some people were asking about that in the previous video. <laughs> Let 
Once I cleaned up the mess that I ended up making, uh, we had two holes in a plastic cover. I know, not very exciting. Oh, and also, a, if you put a bolt in your chuck with a bit of rolled up sandpaper, it turns into a reasonably potent little sander that I used to clean up the holes and stuff. Not perfectly, but it works. And the ducts are designed to specifically blow the air only over the motors. Last time I had them just sort of circulating air into the motor cavity and that didn't seem to do anything. Anyway, shifting gears again, we had to do some programming. Hey, the Arduino that I dunked in water is living. It works. I'm going to be able to use it. To avoid the same thing happening, I designed two water resistant boxes so that hopefully we can keep the water out of the electronics. Now you might have seen something that said pointy bob. So for some reason, my girlfriend and I thought that the boat kind of looks like pointy SpongeBob with the horrendous yellow color. So she jokingly said, looks like Pointy Bob. And now the name's kind of stuck for me. So I think I'm going to start calling this boat Pointy Bob. I know it's stupid, but whatever. <laughs> So I glued the Arduino into its Arduino house and started the programming process. So to speed up my thinking process a little bit, I drew out the circuit. I know I'm not an electrical engineer, as you can probably tell. Uh, it turns into spaghetti pretty fast, but it just gives me an idea of where I need to hook everything up. Uh, yeah, don't look at that. It's a little embarrassing. Once I finish that, I moved on to kind of map out a couple different com control schemes on paper that I could work off of when I was programming. This inevitably ended up turning into another mess, but that's okay because I was able to abstract just a bit of pseudocode that I could write to get myself started in the programming process. I find this really helps me get going, but you know, each their own. So it didn't take too long to actually write the program out. Um, I tested all of the components individually because I was trying to avoid my least favorite thing in the world, which is wiring. Because as you can probably imagine, six servos is gonna take a few wires connecting them. And I got the amazing chance to go see the Battle of Alberta, which was really awesome, but that distracted me again. Anyways, once I was home, I made out a power distribution board for a bunch of different stuff. Uh, I tried to make the wiring, you know, as mature as I could with a bit of expansion. I don't know, you know, I tried my best. <laughs> um, as you can see it ends up kind of turning into a spaghetti monster. But anyways, I drilled a hole in the back of the boat and that was for all of the servo wires to go through. Okay, wiring harness is in and kind of done. So I'm gonna continue working on this. Okay, all the wiring is together. As you can see, it's kind of a bundle mess, but it's all together. So we have simultaneous control of everything that I want. So that's good. Now I'm gonna get hook up the throttle. So I just finished the part of the code that um, turns the fans on at about. 70% throttle So if I go above there The fans turn on it triggers a little relay So I have three more relays open for future expansion, but basically the the all of the wiring and coding is done now for at least this uh, early iteration So yeah, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and then um, move on to uh, work on some other stuff, but Maybe we'll go give it a quick bathtub test to make sure that everything works as expected. Uh, but yeah, looks good. So now it's time to clean up my mess. I <laughs> uh, love it. In the end, doesn't look too bad. I just pray that I never have to go in to fix anything because it's all kind of bundled around itself. Hello YouTube, welcome back to my bathroom vlogs. So we're just gonna give 
The controls a quick test to make sure everything works when it's in the wall. Turn the whole machine on. And let's place it in. So it's fully loaded up, everything is in. So I'm curious to see how she acts. So everything ended up being pretty good. Uh, I mean, it all works and stuff like that. And yes, I know I'm a bad boy. I know I got in trouble for doing tests in the bathtub, but uh, it's okay, whatever. I don't go, when you don't go full throttle, it's not nearly as loud. But anyway, so it is completely 100% ready for the sort of more serious lake test. Uh, I'm gonna try to do that pretty soon and have a video out. Hopefully everything goes well, but we'll see. And I can demonstrate all my different ways I did the controls. I mean, basically one different way I did the controls. Um, but anyways, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I can see you guys in the next one. Peace out.